الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد this is the final gathering and sitting in the first daura uh, that which is entitled al majalis majalis al akhirah majalis al akhirah qiraat fi siyar alam al nubala gatherings of the hereafter readings and the biographies of the eminent and the noble scholars and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gatherings from us and to make them heavy on our skills with him and to grant us all uh, a long life upon his obedience and upon goodness and upon khair and that he pardon us for our mistakes and our sins and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us beneficial knowledge and righteous actions we have an examination tonight a test for those who are interested in and want to test their knowledge of that which they had reviewed and studied some of the issues specifically with regards to the carriers the carriers of the sunnah and the names of some of the most well-known scholars of hadith from the time of the companions radiallahu anhum until the tabi'at ba'a tabi'in and even in the time of the kutub sitta but before that there were uh, a couple of questions uh, that we will clarify insha'Allah and one of them was about the death of Al-Dhahabi rahimahullahu ta'ala and it's mentioned in his biography that he uh, was teaching in a place called uh, Turbatu Umm As-Sarih Turbatu Umm As-Sarih and he died there uh, and he was buried in that area so this place here Turbatu Umm As-Sarih this was a, a madrasa a madrasa and it was a waqf a waqf is is an endowment, a place that somebody or something that somebody has set for the sake of Allah and can only be used for that which the person <coughs> bestowed it and placed it as a, as a waqf and it to be used. So this was from the noble people and he had this land and he left this land in this school uh, in Dimashq, in Damascus as a, a waqf, as a waqf and it was a madrasa and it was called Madrasa to Turbat Umm Sari. And there in this area, in this land, in this school, there was a school for the recitation of the Qur'an. There was two schools there, one of them specifically for qira'at and for teaching the different modes of recitation of the Qur'an. And there was another school there likewise on the same premises and that was for al-Hadith al-Sharif, al-Hadith al-Sharif. And also in the same waqf there was a graveyard uh, and the likes like this. So it came that um, that Dhahabi, he died there, and then he was buried there, not meaning buried in the school, and he buried in the area, in the graveyard there, not meaning buried in the school, and he someone maybe misunderstood that, or possibly I didn't clarify uh, properly in the summarization of that, and Dhahabi, rahimahullah he was died, he was buried in the nearby uh, graveyard there, in the, near, in the nearby graveyard there. So this school was called, uh, it was from the Madaris al-Shafi'iyya, from the, 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 the schools where the, the scholars of the al-Shafi'i Madhab in Damascus, they would study, and there are a number of schools there, and it was near another school that was very famous likewise in those days. It's called Madrasa al-Ashrafiyya, and it's in the same place. This was uh, the clarification of that issue. There was another question that had come with regards to the narrations of Abdullah ibn Abbas, uh, and we mentioned that he narrated 1,696, uh, 1, uh, correctly. There are some of the scholars had counted it as 1,665, as 1,665. Uh, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Adam Ethiopi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of al-fiyya, al-fiyya al in these in these lines of poetry here, he mentioned that these numbers here, these numbers here, the one who gathered these numbers uh, was Ibn Jozi. Ibn Jozi, he died in 597, ta'ala, and he relied upon a musnad at the, in those days. It was called a musnad Abi Abdurrahman Baqi Ibn Makhlad. And it was from the largest collections of hadith in those days. And he counted the numbers from there. But that particular musnad and that collection of narrations, we don't have it today. So the greatest collection of hadith that we have today is the narrations of, is the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. 
So Ahmad Shahi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he checked in uh, Al-Musnad and he found that in, in Al-Musnad actually there is 1,900, uh, 1,690 uh, and 96. So there's more than what was counted in the other Musnad. So if someone's seen the difference in between these two numbers, this is the reason why. This is the reason why. Someone asked about that question. Uh, and this is the reason why. Uh, because uh, the original numbers were depending and re relying upon the Musnad of Baqi ibn Makhlad, rahimahullah ta'ala, and uh, this is not present today. So Ibn Jawzi, he, he, he counted those narrations, and that information has been transmitted from him and, and followed until, uh, until today. But Ahmed Shakir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he verified that and he based upon what we have in Al Musnad by Imam Ahmed, and he found that there was actually more. There are actually more in the Musnad of, of Abdullah ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhuma. So from here, there's a difference uh, in the number. So from here, there's a difference in the number. With that, if there are any questions or comments or corrections from the, from the Dora or the seminar. No. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruku wa atubu ilayk.